Hello Booktube, this is Becky from Becky Writes. This is Becky Reads and this is my Diversathon TBR. This is the second round of Diversathon and it will be taking place from January 22nd to January 29th, 2017. So a nice readathon, Sunday to Sunday. And it is being hosted by four lovely Booktubers, Joss from Scribbles Reads, Monica from She Might Be Monica, Christina Marie, and Simon from Savage Reads. I'll be linking all their channels down below so you can find them and follow them. Diversathon is for us in the reading community an opportunity for us to intentionally choose more diverse books from more diverse authors to more diverse characters. This can be based along ethnic and racial identities, sexual orientation identities, ability and ableness identities, and class and poverty identities. The hope with Diversathon is that we get out of who we normally read about. Since the majority of protagonists are still able-bodied straight white people, then we are trying to read beyond that narrow box of who is assumed to be a good protagonist. So this is a great opportunity to read broadly. The focus for this diverse Thon is to read own voices, which means that the author identifies with the protagonist they're writing. There are excellent books that are written by authors who are not a part of the communities of the characters they're writing. But for this Diversathon especially, we're trying to read books that have an author who reflects the protagonist. We are trying to read authors who are writing from a place of knowing that community and belonging to that community. With that in mind, my first book on my TBR is the group read for the week, and that is Colson Whitehead's Underground Railroad. This came out last year and is one that's been on my TBR, but one that I've been hesitant about picking up. I know that there are a couple of really brutal scenes in the beginning as uh, Cora and her male companion, whose name I don't remember, as they escape slavery on the Underground Railroad and head north to freedom. What is interesting about this particular story is that Colson Whitehead uses magical realism to imagine that the Underground Railroad is an actual railroad. So instead of being the metaphor that we've grown up using, he imagines the Underground Railroad as an actual set of train tracks and a train. Um, and I'm curious, I'm really, really curious about how this comes together. This has gotten amazing reviews. It was clearly chosen to be an Obra book club pick. So it's been on my to read list for months. It's one that I know I will probably love and it's going to move me, um, but one I've been a little anxious about. So I'm grateful and glad to be sharing and reading this with the Diversathon community. My next pick is the only one that might not be own voices, but I'm not sure. And that is Lumberjanes volume four. Now this one features women of multiple different ethnic backgrounds and sexual orientations. And I am not sure or if any of the creators have uh, a queer sexual identity. I wasn't able to figure that out. I think one of them might. I think Noel Stevens might, but I don't know. So this is the only one that may or may not be own voices. It's a little bit harder to know with sexual orientation unless someone is very, very out about their queer identity. But I love Lumberjanes because they have a variety of sexual orientations and even gender identities. There's a character in here who's sort of gender ambiguous and another character that has been hinted at that is trans. So I just love this comic series. I think it does so much to promote feminism and equality among a whole bunch of different identities and it's got magic to boot so reading the fourth volume and installment of The Lumberjanes is definitely on my list for this week. Then I'm going to be listening to the audiobook of Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly. This is the nonfiction story of the African-American women who helped us to win the space race, who were our mathematicians and our computers before computers were machines, and who were our engineers and who have been sort of lost to history. I'm very very excited to be reading this and then going to see the film. Next in my perhaps overly ambitious TBR, I'm going to hopefully finish God of the Oppressed by James Cohn. God of the Oppressed is a book of theology. It's quite dense. I read this in graduate school and so I'm rereading it. And this basically is the argument that Cohn made in the 70s that God is black, that God is African American because in the United States, the people who understand oppression and liberation in its truest form, in its closest form to how Jesus lived as a human, are African Americans because they were brought here in chains, because liberation hasn't come yet. When they sing songs of liberation, they are singing them out of a place of knowledge. Whereas people like me, who have never had to worry about real liberation, uh, can only think of them as intellectual speculation. I have read the first couple of chapters of this. It is very dense, so I did start it early, knowing it would take me more time. But it is a really powerful read. This is not something for the amateur, sorry guys, but it is a really profound read to begin to reimagine uh, what I know of my own personal faith and also 
intellectual Christianity through this lens. So James Cone, who was, is, I think he's retired, but he was a professor at Union Theological Semin Seminary in New York, wrote this in the 70s, and it's been a profound the book of theology ever since. So hopefully finishing this up. And as if that wasn't enough, I'm going to take two books from my January TBR and I'm going to try to read The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger, both by Renee Adier. This is a fantasy retelling of A Thousand and One Arabian Nights set in a mythological world that is Arab and Indian inspired. I believe Renee Adier herself is Indian, I think think she is a woman of color and this is a world of color and I have read the first chapter and enjoyed it. I read it several months ago and I've been aching to finish these. I've heard good things. Lots of people just love this duology so it was on my TBR for January and I felt what better time to pick these up than for Diversathon. I think it's important to remind ourselves and our publishers and our community fantasy readers that you can have excellent fantasy that is written by and about people of color and that it can be amazing in-depth fantasy that doesn't have to take place in a European inspired world. So I'm very excited to be picking these up. All right, you guys, this is my perhaps uh, too ambitious TBR for Diversathon 2017 or January 2017. Remember to use hashtag Diversathon when you are tagging these videos and talking on Twitter. I would love to know what you guys are planning on reading. And even if you're not going to participate in the whole readathon for a week, I would love to know if there are any own voices, authors, and books you're going to going to be picking up in January or in the near future. I hope you guys are all doing really well and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!